Hey there, Jenna here. I'm the founder of Star Family Wisdom, and I'm also a former global vice president for Whole Foods Market. And today we're going to be talking about some frequently asked questions related to the ET and UFO phenomena. I spent many years at Whole Foods Market leading teams and individuals through massive change and transformation, and it is a continuation of that mission here today that we are having this conversation. I started awakening about five years ago, and that awakening led to contacting my star family, or I should say they contacted me. And through that contact, I have had the ability to understand so much more about what is possible in our universe, what is possible for the human being, and what is possible for our future as we embrace the idea of intelligent life forms that exist beyond Earth. And it is a process of remembering our ancient past and a process of unlearning and relearning that is required for us to move forward in really beautiful ways. So we're going to talk through some questions that I would love to answer for you today. And this is based on my personal experience, based on my connection with ETs, my channeled information that comes from them, which is most of what you see on Star Family Wisdom. And Also, my research that I've been guided to by them and by my non-physical team. So this is meant to act as a way for you to gain a little more insight into what is true about our reality, what is true about our contact with ETs on Earth. So first, are aliens or ETs on Earth physically? Yes, There are hybrid alien human beings living among us. I prefer to not use the term alien much because I think that is not respectful. We like to use the term star family at Star Family Wisdom because we recognize that many of the ETs that are in contact with Earth today are in fact related to us in some way, shape, or form. So there are indeed hybrid humans living among us. Some of them know they have hybrid genetics, some of them do not. That's not necessarily important, but the hybrid program is happening to support the continue, continuation of life and the survival of both the gray races and the human race and supporting the evolution of life in that way. And many UFO sightings are just visitations from many different races of ETs, and they've been monitoring our evolution and our ability to make open contact with the rest of the galaxy. And they're eagerly awaiting our ability to make more open contact. So in some cases, these are just drive-bys. They're merely curious and monitoring our reaction to the sightings. In some cases, these sightings occur when visitors might be attempting to make contact with one of their own, with a being that they may have a soul bond, or when they might be interested in monitoring military facilities. They really don't understand our propensity towards violence, and so they are very curious about our evolution in that regard. And additionally, there are many souls on Earth today who normally incarnate in other parts of our galaxy or universe who have had lives in other civilizations, and I am one of those ET souls, what we are now calling interplanetary souls. Question two, did aliens seed the human race? Well, it's complicated, but technically, yes. And while most major world religions consider humans a creation of God, what if we considered for a moment that God's creation is a far bigger creation than we have understood? And what if the evolutionary process in our universe includes spiritually advanced creator beings who operate in higher dimensions? And these creator beings might contribute to the evolution of life throughout galaxies in our universe. Secondarily, ETs and star races have contributed to genetic alterations in humans leading to the modern day Homo sapien. So there have been numerous interventions in our ancient past, in addition to the fact that we were indeed seeded by a more advanced group of creator beings. What happens after disclosure? Question number three. 
Well, the human race is going to make a quantum leap to becoming a galactic race, and we're not even quite ready for disclosure. We're getting more and more and more ready every day, and that's why more of this information is coming out and why we have access to more and more insider information as well from some folks who have worked in our governments and militaries. But one of the issues around disclosure is that as we learn about life and the advanced nature of other civilizations out there, it calls into question many of our systems on Earth, and it forces us to evolve our technology to a place that would be potentially thousands of years ahead of where our te technology is today. And it gives us the ability to provide basic needs and free energy to all humans on Earth. That is if we choose to learn from our star families. And we have some tension here on Earth, and we'll talk about that next as to why maybe disclosure has not happened yet. But imagine if Earth became a beautiful paradise for visitors and we had our galactic friends and neighbors enjoying vacations on our beautiful planet. What if we were able to welcome visitors to our planet and show it off? What if we were able to move off of our planet and live in starships or in cities in space orbiting Earth to keep the surface of the planet healthy? So what if we were able to live in a way where we could migrate easily between our home planet and those cities in space? And with quantum technology, which we're learning more and more about every day, our commutes might become instantaneous. So there's a lot to look forward to, but that kind of change is gigantic and will require significant dismantling and rebuilding of our current systems. Why hasn't disclosure happened? Well, there are many reasons, including our readiness, including what we just talked about regarding the quantum leap we will need to make in terms of our systems. We also have folks on our planet who are greedy and who are focused on power and control and providing basic needs and free energy to all humans on Earth threatens their ability to stay in control and to harness the financial resources that they would like to harness. So we have a tension here on Earth that we are trying to resolve. Humans have also had a propensity towards violence. And our ability to peacefully interact with other civilizations is a necessity for open disclosure and open contact in a more broad way. And this is also a concern among governments about the introduction of alien technology and its impact on our economic systems and industries. So resiliency will be required as we navigate this sort of profound change. With all change of this magnitude, there will always be some breakdowns before there is a breakthrough. How can we help disclosure happen? Well, we can support socioeconomic policies that promote clean energy, peaceful resolution of conflict, educating ourselves about the truth of our reality, the truth of our history. And the more people start to understand the truth of how our universe works, the spiritual mechanics of our universe, the history that we've misinterpreted here on earth, we will get closer and closer to official disclosure. And it's almost time. And the ETs are eager to interact with us peacefully. And they are interacting with us peacefully in so many ways. There are so many humans on earth who are in contact right now who have remembered their lives off planet, who have remembered their connection with these star beings, and we're building towards the ability to have that peaceful, open contact. This next one's for all of you skeptics out there. How can we verify the ET phenomena is actually real? I was right there with you for a long time. Well, there are many different contact modalities, including telepathic connection, UFO sightings, abduction, understanding past life memories, understanding simultaneous time memories. We have a lot of ways that we can retrieve information from our higher selves, from the universe, in addition to verifying actual physical contact, physical sightings, and vast amounts of evidence <clears throat> that are now leading us to connect the dots on this. 
Abduction research uses hypnosis to help retrieve suppressed memories. And the gradual declassification of government documents also shows that our governments have known for many years that this is a reality that is also part of the complication in allowing disclosure to happen, right? Because we have a very large cover up that has happened for many years, which started for good reason, but now is creating a complication. And many of our astronaut, astronauts have confirmed their knowledge of ET races and UFO sightings. <clears throat> Again, there is a vast amounts of evidence, and you can learn even more about that in our UFOs and Preparing for Contact course. Why don't the UFOs land? Well, most star races are vibrating at a higher frequency than we are. Some of them have landed, but most operate in the fourth, fifth, and sixth dimensions, and we're currently vibrating between the third and the fourth dimensions. Some star races are able to temporarily lower their vibration to come closer to humans and interact, and these interactions are usually UFO sightings or abduction cases. And until we can raise our vibration collectively, they won't land and we won't make that open contact because currently the vibration, the frequency at which many of the star races are operating would instantaneously overwhelm most humans. So that's why we have to work on our healing and raising our vibration to get to a point where we can make that sort of contact. Okay, last two questions. Why have some humans seen or interacted with aliens and some haven't? Well, again, it's about vibration and frequency. Some humans are a closer vibrational match, allowing contact to happen more easily. And even in these scenarios, the humans are usually a little overwhelmed and they experience lingering symptoms like the awakening of psychic and multisensory abilities, which has happened for me. Some humans have had past lives as ETs and are related to star races, which facilitates a telepathic communication, which I have experienced. And each physical being has a soul and souls incarnate in different life experiences for the purpose of growth and wisdom and, and learning. And some souls incarnate on physical planets like Earth, and they might continue to incarnate on Earth until they accomplish all of their lessons and move on to a higher dimensional physical reality. But all souls have a soul group or a soul family that is part of their soul group in the spiritual dimension. And some of those groups now include intermingled human ET experiences in the physical dimension. So that's what's facilitating the telepathic contact with ETs. It's because, like for me as an example, I'm in contact with my star family who are part of my specific soul group in the spiritual dimension. We just happen to be incarnating in different places right now in the physical reality. Why do you call aliens star family? Because I believe and know now that we are descendants from many different star races and life is a process of continual evolution throughout the cosmos. And we've interacted with star races for thousands and thousands of years. And in some cases, our direct descendants of them, or we might carry lingering genetics. And in fact, some indigenous cultures around the planet refer to ETs as star family because they honor that connection and they haven't lost that ancestral memory that the rest of the world has over time. And many indigenous origin stories even include tales of star family rescuing survivors of a great cataclysm and teaching survivors about how to become a spiritual people of the earth. And once you realize that we're all actually intimately connected and that there are star races that view us as their children, it becomes a little easier to consider them family. And I have an understanding of my connection with my soul group after many years of research and past life regression, and I know that only two of those souls from this, my specific soul group are incarnated with me here on Earth, and the rest of my soul group are living on a starship, which is usually considered home for my soul when I'm incarnating, because that's where I've spent a lot of time. That's where my soul feels most at home. So just like some souls may consider Earth home because they've incarnated here more than other places, there are a lot of souls on Earth today that would consider other planets their home. And 
We're here to help with this process of disclosure and to help us prepare and to help us evolve past our current state on earth and to help us transition eras. And that change is huge and it's exciting. And I hope that you're excited to learn more about that because I think this is something we can begin to embrace with an open heart, with an open mind and without fear. And as we do that, that allows us to make that transition in a way that is more easeful, in a way that breaks down some of the, the barriers and the walls and the issues that we have faced on earth. So what I know to be true is that we have a beautiful future ahead of us if we are willing to learn from our ET brothers and sisters and if we are willing to embrace this multidimensional reality without fear.